All right, everyone. Welcome to Lecture here. Right, going to do the sheath for the survival knife now. So this will be made from three millimeter veg tan leather. So just cut your designs out, and then we'll come back. Right. So this is your basic bits. So there's the pouch, the leg tie. The ferro rod, this bit will be folded over and sewn in, and then the ferro rod will be made slightly smaller. And this little bit is so you can have a lanyard, so if it falls out of the hoop, it'll hold it. The belt loop, obviously, that will be folded under like that with the belt loop uh, and the um, clasp. Actually, that's the ferro rod, that's that bit, but you know, either way. And then inside is these bits and obviously this will be cut here and here that bit taken away so that slots in right so the first thing we're going to do is prepare for the belt loop and strap for the knife so you want to take your knife make sure it's in the center draw some lines and then somewhere between here make sure it's a little bit thicker than the the strap so it can move up and down in case the guard prevents it being in the right place so make sure you've got about four mil just to um yeah so we'll go up a little bit higher than it should be So now just cut between those to create a slit and then that will allow the strap to go in and then when we start sewing it we can sew that on to there as well. Right, what we'll do before we go any further, we'll stitch this on so it's right in the right place. So just make sure that when your knife is in place like this, hang on, that this strap is definitely big enough to go over, which you can see it is, that's definitely alright, so what we can do now is prick four holes, wherever many you want, you could just do two, I'm going to do four though, gives me a chance to test out my new, my homemade um, hole punch thing. So up through the back, down there, to tie a knot in this if we wanted to now. Make sure you leave a little bit hanging out as well, so you can um, tie it off at the end. I normally use a bit of glue as well. The only thing I would say if you use glue, be very careful because it seems to react with the dyes when you use them. So I've noticed super glue tends to go sort of white, like the, the dye won't penetrate it. And um, PVA glue seems to go black. Right, I've just took off the edges of this as well with one of these edges. Um, that's not essential, it just makes it look better. If you haven't got one, it doesn't really matter. I used to do it without them. So that's been glued down. That'll all be hidden anyway. But the better that is, because obviously there's going to be a belt going in there. So now I've thinned out these ends, I need to glue them together. Now I'll use super glue because it speeds the whole process up. If you do use super glue though, you will have to clamp it. Because if you just press it, it doesn't hold. It has to be really held firm. But it will work really good. So all you need is a vice really. So put some super glue on this edge. Fold these over. Make sure it's in the right place. Yeah, and a cent uh, at first these won't really stick very well until you put it in a clamp 
once you've got this clamp this will hold beautifully right so that's nicely glued up we'll now glue that onto the back of the sheath make sure what you're doing is the side you want it so that will be a right-handed sheath if you wanted a left-handed sheath you'd obviously have to do it that way right so that's the bit um, glued on now we need to punch the holes to sew that on so you can do this anyway you can use an awl if you want draw a line go along with an awl standard awl or you can draw a line with drill, with drill bits you know drill I'm going to keep using these for now right so once you've got your holes done and they're all the way through what you want to do so that when you slide your knife in and out it doesn't catch any thread or anything like that along here where the thread will be you want to cut a little groove in you know it needs to be about a millimeter deep you can use a knife you can sand these in if i just keep going over with a piece of sandpaper where the holes are but as long as you have a little groove there with a the thread to sit in so the knife doesn't catch it then you can sew it on so that's that done you can see that's under the actual surface of the leather so the knife should never catch that uh, sew in there that's the back side you know it's always going to look slightly rougher on the back side anyway but uh, yeah so what we can do now is start preparing, I think, uh, so I think we'll have to do the ferro rod bit first next. So I've never done one of these, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to just go along as I do it anyway. You need to definitely thin that down. So what I'll do is I'll thin that down fold it over, put the furry rod in, glue it and we'll see whether it needs um, sewing as well right so we're getting to the stage where we can really start putting this together now so the furry rod little holder is sewn up ready to be put in place wherever we want it I think we're going to have it on the long side aren't we so it'll be like that, this furry rod will need a little bit of adjusting I need to make the top smaller it's the only one I had that I could do this with. So you want to work out where that's going. Under that will be something like that, so we can have the little lanyard going round. We want the leg tie, which I still haven't decided whether I'm going to change or not. Right, I definitely recommend before you sew this bit on and this bit to put the little eyelets in because it's a lot more difficult if you do it later. So if you haven't got one of these tools, this is how to use it. You just put this on, put the lever over, get the other side, put that on. It's quite simple to use, and I have the instructions with them. Place that on like that. And there you go, a nice little eyelet. Right, to give you an idea of where you should be now all of the little parts are glued in for one half of the sheath if that makes sense you've still got to put the the top on and then the pouch so you just individually glue the parts on as you go along make sure there's a gap big enough I've left about a five mil gap to compensate for the thickness of the blade because it's thicker than the separating materials they're only three mil so you're going to want a little bit of give um so yeah you can clamp this anyway i clamp it with pegs and you know closed pegs and these other little clamps the knife does fit i won't force it in too much because i don't want to break the um glue seal at the minute but you can see that fits in quite nice right so we're going to do the pouch now so there's a couple of ways you can do this I'm going to wet form it for the first time. I've never done this before, but I thought I'd just try it, see how it works. 
So you basically need a template for your pouch and basically it will fold like this to form the pouch. And these two side flaps are where it gets sewn onto the sheath. It, I soaked it in some water for about 15 seconds and then left it for about 5 minutes. This is a piece of wood that's the exact size that the pouch is going to be. And I'm going to form the lever around this piece of wood. So we'll slide, slide that in now. And now we can form this round. Yeah, that's going to look alright, I think. Not sure how well you can see that. So I think that should do it. So that would be your pouch. There's your flap to go over the top. We'll still need to add a clasp, but that can be done while this is in this shape anyway. Actually, what we'll do first, before you do glue that on, make sure you do the eyelet. So again, you just punch a hole, punch a hole, and using the uh, instructions of how to put the eyelet things in, add those. They're pretty simple. You just punch a hole, and one bit goes on over that bit, one bit goes over that bit. So what I've done here, I've marked the sewing holes with one of these punches. Not gone all the way through, not even slightly, it's just an initial marking. And now you could use, you could push this all the way through, but they're quite hard to pull out. You could hammer an all through each of those holes, but I'm going to just run a one and a half, two millimeter drill bit all the way through those holes. The sheath is ready to sew up now. So the way I do it isn't actually the way you're really supposed to do it. I do it in a sort of simple in and out sort of stitch, similar to what you saw here. Uh, professionals would do what they call a saddle stitch, where you're stitching with two needles. Um, I just prefer doing it this way because it's the way I've always done it. Um, so get your thread put in your needle. I always double it up so that each time there's two bits of thread going through. You won't be able to get all the way round in one go. So what I do, I'll start at the top. I'll go in and out a couple of times to reinforce that bit. You want to reinforce here, here, um, and down on the end. Maybe here, 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 here. So all you do is when you get to those bits, you do it a couple of times. But what I would do, I'll, I'll probably try to stitch down to here and then back again. That'll be one go. And then this way I'll go down here, reinforce, and then back again, and then reinforce. So, as I say, for this first bit, I'll do this a couple of times on this. So this bit's been reinforced quite well. And at this point, you could probably tie it off here if you wanted to, but leave that bit on there so that you can um, tie it off again later. So I'll carry on stitching now, and on the way back, fill those holes. Right, so the sheath is pretty much done for the main work. Now all we need to do is burnish the edges and then dye it. Now the dye I use is this stuff, Fibings Dark Brown Pro Dye. There's loads of different dyes you can get there, but that works really well. Just one coat and it's done. You can add more though. So. To burnish these edges, what you do, you wet them and then you rub them with a piece of wood. Right, so to burnish the edges, you want to sand it down 
just like you would a piece of wood, you want this to be as uniform as possible. So we'll sand it first. <laughs> otherwise, if it's really lumpy and bumpy, you're not going to be able to burn it properly. So sand it down so you get nice and smooth and go through the sandpapers so to get finer grip. Right, so this edge has been sanded down reasonably well. Now you want to wet this edge. Again, I'm no professional at this. This is just from what I've uh, seen other people do. You, know, you find videos all over the place showing you how to do these things. Wet this edge, and then with a piece of wood, you want to just rub the edge. So that makes a hell of a difference. So do that all around the edges. You don't really need to do these thinner edges, but if you can, give it a go. But it's normally on these thicker edges that you do this bit. So once you've done that, it's ready to die. Time to die the um, sheath. So you can use anything you want to do this. I'll use a sponge. Just dip it in the dye. And you'll see when this goes on, it's pretty much instant. Not quite enough on that bit there. And you have enough on there. There you go. That's better. So just coat your sheath. Not get it as even as possible. We're pretty much done. Now I was going to show you the survival kits that will go in these, but obviously that's down to your personal preference. And um, I've searched through the stuff I've got, and I don't have a lot of stuff left. I've been doing so many of these kits and selling them or putting them in my pry bars I used to sell I've run out of stuff to put in them but I have got for now some strike anywhere matches in this side a needle and thread and some fishing line with a hook and a weight still a bit of room in the top of this one for something very small and there's still a bit of room in this one for a couple of other little small things for the pouch Again, I've not got a lot to put in there at the minute. I'll have to buy some stuff, but I'm going to put, for now, a lighter and a little multi-tool. So there's at least something in there. And that's pretty much it. So I'll put the scales back on, and then I'll do a proper high-quality video of the end product. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it helpful. Uh, and I hope if you followed along let me know because I'd like to see what yours looks like. So yeah, next bit will be the high quality footage, right? Hope you enjoyed the video, see you later.